This is my solar heater, and it is a very cheap relative of this interesting device which was made in Germany. The link to this video is below, and here we see evacuated tubes which convert solar energy into heat for hot water supply and space heating of a house. In winter, the sun is low on the horizon, and its rays are focused by the concave mirror on the evacuated tubes. In addition, the tubes receive some energy directly from the sun. However in summer, the height of the sun increases, and therefore its rays lose the ability to reach the surface of the concave mirror, but the evacuated tubes produce heat from energy which comes from the sun without the mirror. So, I have to create a cheap version of this German solar heater, and my version should have cost less than $20 per square meter if we want our solar heat to be several times cheaper than heat from natural gas. I started with this variant of my solar heater which was used for various experiments and measurements of energy parameters, and this is a flat glass mirror. Now we will see that it heated its water to 80 degrees Celsius when the ambient temperature was 11 degrees. Of course, the efficiency of our solar heater will be higher if we replace that flat mirror with a similar concave mirror, and maybe someday I will do such an experiment. However I think, this type of concave mirror will be more suitable for us because it is very cheap, and it consists of a reflective film on a thin sheet of expanded polystyrene, and I plan to use this concave mirror this winter. This is the second variant of my solar heater, and its flat mirror is this cheap reflective film. This is a similar experiment, and we see that the reflective film helped heat the water to 79 degrees Celsius. These are the results of measuring the energy parameters of that variant of my solar heater with the glass mirror and the second variant of my heater with the reflective film, and we see that the differences between expensive mirror and cheap film are small. I must clarify that these parameters correspond to this transparent film area of our solar heaters. Both variants of my heater use this absorber, and here we see clusters of solar radiation which goes from the reflective film and heats the water inside this black polyethylene sleeve. In addition, I remind you that the black surface of this absorber receives a little energy directly from the sun, without the mirror. We can remember that this type of absorber was described in the first two videos of this YouTube channel. But this is not the only type that can be used for our cheap solar heaters. For example, I want to try using this type of absorber which was described by my video before last. Of course, we can use other types of absorbers, and I remind you that the German solar heater used this absorber on the basis of evacuated tubes. Our cheap solar heater should have not only an absorber and a mirror, but also this cheap transparent polyethylene film. In addition, it must have this northern wall of expanded polystyrene and these wooden battens to resist strong winds. Interestingly, this north wall is similar to these structures of the solar concentrators of my solar station. I remind you that I built it almost six years ago, and therefore I have the opportunity to predict the lifespan of similar walls on the basis of expanded polystyrene and wooden battens. Obviously, we need to think about the possibility of a hurricane, and therefore the fixation of our solar heaters to the ground must be reliable. Of course, the weight of the water inside the absorber and the large length of these beams help withstand strong winds. We may also need additional weight of soil or concrete, or we decide to use fastenings inside the ground with wooden stakes, concrete or steel. This is a list of materials for a large solar heater with an area of 20 square meters and we can calculate that it is about $10 per square meter. We see that I do not specify the type of absorber, and for example, we can use this type of absorber which was described by my old videos, and its materials had cost $3 per square meter, or this type which was described by me two months ago, and it uses materials worth about $4 per square meter. However we should also add the cost of materials for the fixing to the ground, and our goal is this cost per square meter of absorber. This table corresponds to these dimensions of our solar heater, but the optimal dimensions depends on our geographical latitude, and they may be different if we wanted to operate a solar heater only during the winter, or only from September to April. This table shows how much heat is produced by one square meter of our solar heater for one year, and it shows the cost of our solar heat for the United States, India, and Europe, and it is obvious that our cost depends on this cost of capital and labor, and we see that the higher the heating temperature, the less the annual heat production and the higher the cost of the solar heat. This cost of our heat is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas, and these cases correspond to very cheap solar heat which is about 5 times cheaper than gas. 
This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat, but it is obvious that it will be true if our spending money and time reaches these targets. It was calculation for such features of our solar heater, and for any of these two types of absorbers which will produce approximately the same amount of heat. But it is obvious that this German absorber is more effective, and some other types of absorbers will work better or worse than these absorbers. This is a spot of solar radiation which is reflected from the flat glass mirror, and let's look at where the spot is located in different months. We will see a similar spot position in September when the spot covers about half of our absorber. But reducing the height of the sun above the horizon during October leads to an increase in the absorber area. That is why in November, we will see that the spot completely covers the absorber. But then the spot will begin to go beyond the absorber, and after the winter solstice in December, the height of the sun above the horizon will again increase. Therefore we will again see the perfect coordination between the spot and the absorber at the end of January, and then the proportion of the covering of the absorber by the spot will gradually decrease, and we will see something like this in March. Obviously, the efficiency of our solar heater will be different in different months due to this phenomenon, and due to a decrease in the absorption coefficient of this radiation by the absorber, directly from the sun when its height above the horizon decreases. These are the results of my measurements of the energy parameters of my solar heater on two different days when the midday height of the sun above the horizon had these values. These measurements were made by this solar heater with reflective film in this absorber, and the heater has these dimensions. In addition, I remind you that I am at 50 degrees north latitude, and this area of the transparent film is the area of our solar heater for these energy parameters. This result is not an experimental measurement, but my theoretical calculation I must clarify that I used slightly degraded values of these parameters to calculate the annual heat production of this table. We know that calculations based on these parameters require taking into account the cosine of this angle of incidence of sunlight and taking into account the IM coefficient, which should take into account the fact of a change in the transmittance of this transparent film due to a change in this incidence angle according to these widely known data. We understand that the angle of incidence will be very large in summer and therefore this coefficient together with that cosine can cause the small heat production during the summer months. Therefore here we see that in India, most of the heat will be generated by our solar heaters in winter, and the summer heat production will be small due to the above causes and the small number of sunny days. This is a similar table, but for the south of the United States where autumn and spring will be the main periods for heat production by our heaters, and the winter heat production will be less due to lower temperatures of the ambient air. It is interesting that in Northern Europe, our heat production in summer may be greater than in winter due to significant reduction in the number of sunny days, the ambient temperature, the brightness of the sun, and the length of the day in the winter months. This shadow from the top edge of the mirror further reduces the efficiency in June and July. However, a decrease in the height of the sun above the horizon reduces the shadow, and therefore now, in August, we do not see that shadow. And here we see a bit of the reflected solar radiation from the mirror. But we understand that our solar heater will also lose efficiency in December and January when this spot of solar radiation from the mirror goes beyond the absorber. However, these losses will be small due to the following interesting phenomenon. Here we see the edge of the spot of solar radiation, but here the spot is missing because the transparent film reflects the radiation in the direction of the absorber and a physicist can easily explain this phenomenon through a large angle of incidence of the radiation on the surface of the transparent film. Of course, a glass mirror is slightly better than a reflective film, and now we can notice one of the causes of this fact, and we see small solar radiation leaks from my heater due to non-smooth surface of its reflective film. In addition, the efficiency of our solar heater can decrease due to snow, and we understand that snow regions require an increase in the distance between the ground and the bottom of our heater. Moreover, snow can sometimes cover our transparent film. That is why the transparent film of my solar heaters is almost vertical. This solar heater has been located outdoors for over a year, and sometimes you could see it in my videos about my other experiments. After that, I examined its reflective films, and we see that 13 months almost did not worsen their condition. This is a very good result because the use of the same reflective film outdoors leads to its short lifespan of 10 or 20 months, and therefore I have to periodically replace these mirrors every 18 months. However we see that the fact of their location inside my solar heater radically increases the lifespan of reflective films.
but my testing has not yet answered the question of whether the films will require their periodic replacements every few years. This film has been working inside my heater for 13 months, and its aluminum layer looked towards the sun. This is also a film after 13 months of its work, but its aluminum layer looked in the opposite direction, towards the thermal insulation of the heater. This is a new film, and we do not see much difference. That is why I think that the lifespan of the reflective films will be at least several years, and I recommend placing the aluminum layer of films on the outside because we see that the polymer layer of this case has noticeably degraded, and I remind you that the aluminum layer of this case was located on the inside. At the same time, the polymer layer of this case remains in good condition. The aluminum layer of this reflective film is located on the inside, and here we see the destruction of the film after 13 months. At the same time, this film has the aluminum coating on the outside, and it remains in good condition. Now I show my transparent film after 13 months of its work, and we should not pay attention to this defect, because it was done by the claws of my dog when she was looking for mice. Now we will see that the polyethylene of this film has not yet completely degraded after 13 months of its operation, but it is obvious that we should be prepared to make periodic replacements of our transparent films every few years. I remind you that similar polyethylene films are used for cheap greenhouses, and some types of films have a lifespan of up to 5 years. Of course, the polymer films of our absorbers also need periodic replacements, and this topic was described in previous videos of my YouTube channel. Now I am showing one of my experiments when my solar heater was based on the cheap reflective film, and we see that the water has heated to a temperature of 92 degrees Celsius. I think that the heating temperature would have been higher, but the sun melted the black polymer sleeve, and here we see a puddle due to a large leak of the water from the polymer sleeve. This is a condition of the black sleeve after that failed experiment, and the main cause of my fail was a high ambient temperature which was 31 degrees Celsius. Thus, we have to make a choice of the following alternatives. We use the black sleeve from a more heat resistant polymer, and not from my cheap low density polyethylene, QR we replace the polymer sleeve with some other type of black absorber, and I will talk about it in a minute. Or we refuse to operate our solar heaters in the summer and in other periods when the ambient temperature is greater than 10 or 20 degrees Celsius, or we can remove these parts in the spring, and the heater is operated in a similar way until the autumn cold or frost. We have to pay attention that the surface of the reflective film is not perfectly smooth, and this fact is the second cause of that fail, because the reflected solar radiation forms such concentrated spots which heat the black polymer to high temperatures and melt it. That is why my solar heater with the glass mirror can heat the water to 80 degrees Celsius when the ambient temperature was 11 degrees, and after this experiment, the black sleeve has no damage. I remind you that this is a similar experiment, but for my solar heater based on the cheap reflective film, and now I show the black sleeve after the experiment, and we see that the sun slightly damaged its black sleeve. I think that you have already concluded that this second variant of the absorber with a transparent film is better suited for us but this baton is an unnecessary part. These experiments convinced me that the second variant works well even with concentrated solar radiation, like this. That is why I plan to use the second variant of the absorber with this concave mirror to create another solar heater, and maybe I will make it and test it in the winter. We understand that this water inside the absorber can turn into ice in winter in Northern Europe or America. If we want to avoid it, the water should automatically leave our solar heater after the end of the sun. In addition, such automatic water removal may be required in summer or in hot regions, because let's imagine that we left a lot of water inside the absorber in the evening, and the water lost its temperature until the next morning, and because of this, our solar heater may lose one or two hours while it again heats the water to a temperature of 60 or 80 degrees Celsius. But on the other hand, our absorber without the water can be destroyed by solar radiation from our mirror and therefore we must use heat-resistant polymers for films of our absorber, or we should have good automatics which turn on the pumps for supplying water into our absorbers a few minutes before the sun comes out of the clouds. In addition, the first variant of the absorber may have problems due to similar air bubbles. And my old videos described methods to reduce the causes of the bubbles, and they showed a similar method of removing the bubbles through the side walls of a solar heater. 
Unlike the second variant of the absorber, the air bubbles reduce the efficiency of the first variant, and they can be the cause of its destruction by solar radiation from the mirror. I want to add that I plan to search and test other absorber variants besides the two mentioned.